It's the morning of the 10th of July and the Bolt Hostel, an emergency accommodation centre, is under threat of eviction. We're going to go into the hostel to talk to one of the organisers and ask him what the story is, what's been happening to date and what people can do. Okay, so we are downstairs in the Bolt. Uh, we're expecting an eviction at maybe 10.30 this morning. There's, there's um, an injunction apparently coming into effect. Uh, so the building itself, it's been abandoned, uh, you were saying, for yeah. about three years. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Yeah, the, it's been completely abandoned with uh, a leak in the roof on one side of it, which we're pretty sure uh, the owners would have been aware of, because how could they not be? All you have to do is walk in the door. Uh, that there has been fixed. Uh, formerly it was a, a men's homeless hostel um, and then it was shut down in 2012 and left vacant since then. We have been talking to locals and also an individual who used to work here. They've confirmed with us that uh, there was no legitimate reason to close the place down. The council claimed that it was for health and safety reasons but these the individual that worked here as well as the locals in the community have confirmed that there was nothing wrong with the building that could not be fixed very easily like when we came in here um, we had the place clean and done up and uh, safe and up to fire regulations within a few days so if we can do it with no no money and on a volunteer basis county council could have done this no bother no bother at all but uh, they simply were not willing or did not want to do it. Uh, for whatever reasons, we can only speculate. Uh, so presumably the closure may have simply been a, a, a cost-saving exercise, like the, the rest of it was an excuse. It was just a way of cutting a certain amount off the budget. Mm. I guess we, don't, we won't know. but We don't know, but that's most likely. You know, 2012, a lot of cuts coming in around that time in the government. And they, they probably didn't... Like, the, 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 the hostel was... Um, allegedly causing a lot of tr problems in the community and that there and discontent in the community so they probably thought it just wasn't worth their while to help out these homeless people and provide proper services for them um, it's just too much hassle for them money wise and politically wise for the local community now that's speculation but we can't know for 100% but we do know that it was definitely up to standard for fire regulations and health and safety regulations and there's only certain amount of reasons why, why else they would have closed it, and money is most likely. Um, you you said there that the hostel was causing problems in the local community, mm -hmm. but it's also the case that actually people around here have been very supportive of squatting it and opening it up again. So, oh yeah, well, uh, uh, tell me a bit about that. Absolutely, um, like the, the community response has been extraordinary. Like it it was causing some problems in the community um, due to antisocial behaviour, but we have also made clear to the community. Uh, through door knocking and leafleting that it would be a dry space, no drink or, or alcohol allowed in the space and since that has been made clear um, the community and, and before but even more so since that was made clear uh, the community any fears they had have been relieved and uh, they have all like without exception in my experience have been supportive and uh, we've had carpenters and electricians and labourers and People coming, just knocking on the door, coming down to offer their services to help paint the place and clean it up and make sure it's secure and safe. Uh, people from across the city have been doing this here. Um, so you basically moved in about two weeks ago to reopen it? Roughly just over two weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Um, and then last Friday uh, there was the march from the GPO to outside, uh, which was basically a kind of, I guess, public declaration that you were yeah. here. Yeah, the, the point of the march was... Um, there's a thing in squatting called first contact and we were hoping well not hoping but we, we obviously we want a public launch and let people know about it but we wanted to have the crowd outside to secure the building because the guardy do on occasion just illegally burst into buildings and or the council do to force their way into buildings completely illegal without any court orders so we needed the support outside for the launch and once we made it clear to the guardy that the matter was a civil matter and is none of their concern uh, that would also relieve the fears of the community um, and secure the building itself. Yes, I missed the march, but I arrived down maybe half an hour afterwards, which is when I think four squad cars and a dozen odd yeah. guards arrived. And they sort of made a half-hearted attempt to get in, but, uh, well, <laughs> they kept threatening the guy who was standing beside the door with the rest and gave up when he didn't move after about three yeah. or four minutes. So uh, all kudos to, to him. Yeah. Um, has there been any issues with them coming back since? 
Uh, not since negotiations with the council have opened up. Uh, they've assured us until negotiations completely break down, they won't send in the guardy to angle grind the door and kick us out. Um, seeing that there, we obviously are security conscious and haven't just been leaving the door lying open, but uh, negotiations will come to an end today around 10 or half 10 and we will know the outcome of them at that time and uh, an injunction is coming into force no matter what whether uh, the negotiations are successful or whether they are not the council are forcing us out um, they are putting an end to this if they can yeah i mean it seems curious that the council on the one hand would be saying they're negotiating with you and on the other hand would be going to court to get an injunction you'd imagine that sort of behavior is what they might do if negotiations broke down but uh, it doesn't look like you're terribly serious about or they're terribly serious about negotiations if they're they're kind of dangling the stick in quite such a well not just dangling it but effectively this morning swinging it in, in quite such a serious manner um how, what have those negotiations been like uh, i haven't been present at the negotiations myself i've only been receiving reports from them um generally they've been friendly and cordial but there is obviously an undertone to the whole thing that the council are the the we we know and the council know that uh, we are not allies with each other. Um, they will force us out if they can. It's just the only reason that they've given us any negotiations at all is because we have leverage over them. We have control of the building and we have community support. Otherwise, there would be no talk of anything at all. There wouldn't even be an, a chance of it. There would be no negotiation over the building at all. Um, and how many people would you say have come down to sort of help out in some way over the last few days? Um, like there have been offers of support from all sectors of the community. Uh, as individuals we've had up to 25 people possibly uh, in and out of the building. Like mo more than like actually working, more than that have come down to have a look around and to show their solidarity and express their support for the building obviously. But I'd say up to 25 have been in working. Um, so, I mean, the big obvious question here is there's something like, I think the figure is 300,000 empty dwellings scattered all over the country. Yeah. Uh, some of those are ghost estates in the middle of nowhere, but quite a lot of them are in the cities. Uh, do you think what you've been doing here is the sort of thing that people could be doing elsewhere in Ireland? Absolutely. There are, there are plans at the moment um, to broaden this out to into a countrywide, and there are individuals across the country who are planning to take similar actions that we're aware of. Obviously we can't give details of them actions until they happen and they're publicly announced. But this is growing and it will happen, without a doubt. Thanks very much. Uh, and I guess for those future actions, watch we'll this space. We'll be continuing to report uh, what's happening at the Bolt Hostel and any future eviction attempts here on Solidarity Times. So make sure you've given the page a follow.